there's no foolproof way to be truly safe in this business. You have to trust the guy that you're in there with. I mean, think about it. If you're gonna have some guy setting your body on fire, you wanna know that, that this is a guy that you can trust with your personal safety because if a guy's coming off the top rope and you try to move out of the way at the last minute because you're afraid, then that's when the guy's knee's gonna catch you in the, in the eye. I got into wrestling by accident. The trainer, he bugged me for the longest time to see if I wanted to get into this. At first I didn't care much for it, but then I finally agreed. And that was 18 years ago. So in 1992, me and some friends of mine decided we were going to start our own. You know, there was a time when we would run shows every weekend. And it just wore us out. On the level of independent wrestling, you do it all. I mean, I would drive the bus, we'd get there, we'd set the ring up, set the chairs up, set up the stage, and then everybody would wrestle. You know, never insult the fans' intelligence. That's a rule I've lived by ever since the day I started the Allied Independent Wrestling Federation. I used to talk to fans after every show, and I would ask them what they thought about the show, what they thought about certain matches, and they would tell me what they wanted to see, and I would always incorporate that into the next show. The only people that we let use fire and barbed wire and thumbtacks and other stuff like that are the people who have been in the business long enough to know how to control it. We've never had an injury from fire. If he's gonna be hitting you in the in the head with a, a stick wrapped in barbed wire, you wanna make sure that he's got enough sense to know where to hit you without putting your eye out or ripping you know your lip off. Both of the worst injuries we ever had in the show happened to the same guy where he flipped backwards over the top rope, everything went fine, but instead of his feet hitting the floor first, his head did. The next month, he and another guy decided they was gonna make a pair of boxing gloves out of barbed wire. The other guy, Brian, jumped off the top rope and landed on Terminator X, and the barbed wire ripped into his neck and he bled profusely, it was unreal. You know, I've always said wrestling's like a, it's like a legal mafia. You make a promoter mad, he will actually go to a wrestler in the dressing room and say, okay, you're wrestling this guy tonight, and I've got a problem with him, so I need you to break his leg. I've seen that happen. There's a lot of bad apples in the barrel that we call wrestling. <laughs> you know, it's best to develop a character from your own personality. Now we have a creative team and we'll help wrestlers to, to fine tune their character, but they do what they want to do. It, it makes it much better. Fans will connect with it more because you, you'll make that character more believable. On this level, it's more like a hobby. There's no money in it. Probably one out of every thousand promoters actually make money in this business. I learn a lot from those guys that if you charge them to train them and they can't afford it, they'll walk away. And that could be your life's blood traveling off away from you out there. And everybody knows that wrestling is a show. It's common knowledge. But if you give the fans what they want to see, they'll keep coming back. I believe that very strongly.